<laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Mm -hmm. Fuck, happy Saturday. Mm -hmm. You have seen that intro, maybe think of something I just saw. So that intro where the uh, explosion happens, if you notice, um, yeah. like right before the explosion happens, there's a car. And then oh. right when the explosion happens, the car kind of disappears. Yeah. Yeah. And they were saying like all those pre, all the, well, you know, those, I don't know if they're pre-war, but those nuclear, like a lot of those nuclear bomb videos are fake. They were all fake videos. If you look, it's a lot of miniatures and stuff. And then he, they also bring up the good point, like, how did the cameras survive? How did it survive all well, the, the fallout? Camera, so the only thing I'll, I'll, I'll well, no, because some of those are zoomed in really. Like, if it was zoomed in, like it would, that would have to be really I'm close. Still, may not make it long in the chat. Oh no, Joey, what happened? Uh, those cameras were placed like three and a half miles away because you can live. There's the dude who, there's the Japanese guy that he survived the one in in Hiroshima, and then he crawled his way to fucking Nagasaki, and he survived the second one. Which, what a, by the way. God fucking hate you at that point. Yeah, th this city's got to be much safer, much safer. <laughs> but uh, he hears that whistling. He's like, "Oh fuck!" He's like, "No way! I just survived something like this yesterday." So uh, you know, Saturday night, good old Saturday night. Got some shit rain weather over here. Wind and rain. Yeah, here too, man. It actually started snowing after a while. Joey, I hope you feel better. I hope you could stay for a little bit, but I really do hope you feel better. Um, they get to take your vitamins. Yeah. Uh, fucking yeah. It started raining over here, and then it started snowing, and then it started raining again. It's it's what we call in the business gay. You're like period you weather. Huh? Period weather. It's period weather. Pennsylvania period weather. Mm. Um, before the show, I showed you something that I, uh, Jewy, I think you would get a kick out of, especially oh, super missile that dude porn. Yeah, that was weird. That dude porn that starred dad. They were um, strong though. They were strong. Mm -hmm. There's a guy who put together a George Carlin comedy central, I mean, comedy special out of an AI thing, like had it, write it up and then perform it. And George Carlin's family is suing, which I don't know if they're going to win. I don't, I, I really don't see, I can see the people arguing that, that it's parody, but yeah. it is really good. Like it's fantastically like George Carlin. I'll play a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to start off with a heartfelt apology. I'm sorry it took me so long to come out with new material, but I, I do have a pretty good excuse. I was dead. <laughs> you did a good job of mixing the voice up pretty good, too. So technically, it wasn't my fault. If you want to blame somebody, you're going to have to blame God. <laughs> which we all know is not going to happen. People are always thanking God for the good stuff in their lives, but somehow they conveniently forget that it's the same God who does all the bad shit too. And he does a lot of bad shit. <laughs> you get a promotion, praise Jesus. You get fired. God is testing me. <laughs> you meet your soulmate. God brought us together. Your soulmate dumps you. God is bringing me someone it's else. So good, dude. <laughs> you survive a tornado. I'm so blessed. 20 other people do not. God wanted them in heaven. It's, it's all so bullshit. Fucking great. If he gets credit for the good stuff, then he's got to take the blame for the bad stuff, too. You can't thank him for curing your cancer when he was the one that gave it to you in the first place. <laughs> and don't forget, before he gave you cancer, he had to fucking invent it. What kind of a sick fuck dreams up cancer? And why so many kinds? Skin cancer, blood cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer, and my personal favorite, rectal cancer. <laughs> Dropping a golf ball-sized tumor in your brain doesn't quite do it for the old man anymore. He has to fuck you in the ass, too. It's really sick because it actually... Hey, what's up, Warfus? It actually sounds like... um. The last George Carlin special, I think uh, it's either You're All Diseased or something like that. It It's very, very, very close. Like the AI is getting so good at it. His family should sue and then just release it as an album. Fuck it. AI is for anal intercourse, right? 
<laughs> anal intercourse. Yeah, I had AI last night with my uncle. It was fucking great. Yeah. By the way, I forgot love. To, it's making love. I forgot to say at the be uh, at the beginning of the show, uh, other than like, subscribe, share all that dumb shit, I do have a really cool fucking piece of news. I went to the eye doctor today because I had to get new glasses. Two things. One, my fucking stig or whatever it is, your was fucking eye thing. It's gone completely. Like I don't have anything wrong with my eyes anymore. No more neovascularization. And for some reason, and the lady doesn't understand uh, how at 32 years old, my vision's getting better. <laughs> so I went from a negative three to a two, negative 2.75, which isn't a lot, but it's great it news. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I thought you were going to say something cool. Like I got approved for like the Kano or Cyclops, like eye implants or something. Would, that would have been so much. Like, cool. like, Cyclops is in one eye. Or are we talking about X? -Men Cyclops is two. Cyclops. Kano's one. Kano would be the cool one. Kano would be a little, I feel like it'd be easier. Just one. Two. Kano was my favorite character in Mortal Kombat 1. You like ripping you know, up, cool, man. What's up Yeti? Actually, he was my favorite for the um the fatalities. For the fatality. Just because it was was it like back, back, back A or something, I think. For that, yeah, it was that. really, really easy for me. Um, the one I always had a lot of trouble with for some reason, even though it was so easy, okay. it was four down four to A for uh sub zero. I think it was the distance I have. I always sucked at video games as a kid, and I was like relatively young. I was like fourth grade, third grade when that came out, but Dude, I, I some of them I just couldn't do. I suck. Actually, the easiest one was Liu Kang. Liu Kang was starting all around. Flawless victory fatality. Fuck Flawless you. rape. Flawless rape brutality. <laughs> Flawless, Flawless rape brutality. So that was yeah. that was a good era, the fighting game era. So I was never big with like um fighting games, but that was definitely a good era. The Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2 was fucking dope. Eternal Champions was a really good one that was out there. Um Streets of Rage. Streets of Streets of Rage was a fighting game. That was just a four person walk around. Um another really good one was uh Samurai Showdown. I don't know if anybody remembers that one. Samurai Showdown was fucking dope. Go find a uh a match with that. There were some really good players in that. Good fucking. Um, oh, you're forgetting about the, the best Genesis game of all time. Killer Instinct and Tekken 3 were great, but those were a little later on. Fuck okay, yeah, dude. Yeti saying Killer Instinct and Tekken 3 were his like. I think Yeti's about our age or in between us, so. This game. Everybody fucking puts on this fucking game. This was. I think this is the last, by the way. I'm pretty sure that this is the last of Sega Genesis. I think this is 96 or 97. This is one of the last games for Sega. You know. 42 Max Bonk. Yeah, he's oh, yeah, he's cool. an name. Yo, Yeti, I always love me an older man. So let me know when you want to hook up. They call me a human fleshlight. <laughs> Give me some game videos on here. I will pop up towards the end. I got yeah, one. That Samurai, I just up. Pull up some Samurai Showdown, bro. That was a dope game. Samurai Showdown that, that came out in like um, mid 90s, 94, 95. But there was an arcade at a candy store uptown. That's when they used to have the dope candy stores of fucking arcades and shit. But uh, this place was called Sweet Magic. They sold baseball cards in the back. It was cool as fuck. But they had um, Samurai Showdown. And my brother James and I would go up there and just drop quarters. Crazy. Oh, like I, I do. No, it's not. I, I like this shit because I haven't, but I would love to. I would love to take a poopy on his tummy. I'll this bring baby weird. wipes. <laughs> this is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Speed it up a little bit. You know, this is this isn't even. I think this is like some. Uh, Walk through showing you how to freaking uh, kind of touch buttons. It was like jumping off the street fighter thing, but it was very good. This game was cool. There's a really good player in here called Caffeine Nicotine. Just the best dude. Yeah, he was cool, so. Yeah, he's a ceremony. Oh, Connor froze. I was gonna say, yeah, he's a ceremony. Yeah, I'm saying he's gonna be the one to drop the hot calls. Why did I I'll, freeze? I'll take the hot calls. I also got a really nice glass table. 
Um, here, oh, let's see. Ready? Move. Uh, no, that didn't work. Um, oh man, Connor is gone. He left us. Uh, yeah, I got this mean glass table though, and uh, we could fog it up. You know, you let me know if you want to give me some hot calls. So now it's the Sean show. Nothing but Sean. I'll tell you about my uh, my Jenny warts. First time I got Jenny warts, I think I was uh, 16. I, I actually called that age 16. It was a very busy age for me. Uh, that was so a, fun. A lot of hot girls. That's where I coined the name Human Fleshlight. Okay. Um, I don't know why that. Actually, they used, to, they used they used to call me Drake man. Bell because of um I was so young just getting it on, but you know. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Drake me again. Da, 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 da. I'm, not the, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. That was so dumb that that fucking froze like that. That really annoyed the shit out of me. You know, I, I think it was because of um what you posted it because like the game the video that you were showing was like slowing down a little bit. I think it was just. I think StreamYard got wet over the video game. It was like, I can't God, it's, this. it's weird because once in a blue moon, StreamYard's pussy will get very saturated. And I don't want to talk about it because the last time I got in a lot of trouble. Talking about well, StreamYard. that's what the rain background is. It's not really rain. That's StreamYard, StreamYard saturation. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about this because this is fucking. I still want to talk about StreamSatch. Topic of the hour, we've got breaking news overnight. A federal appeals court blocking a Texas immigration law that would allow the state to arrest migrants who cross into Texas into the border illegally. The decision came just hours after the Supreme Court ruled that Texas can assume border security duties and arrest migrants. Wow. Like, that's going to be realize, like, You understand the government fucking hates you. Like... It doesn't even matter anymore. And I got further videos on this, but this, the one I'm about, this the whole, whole thing I'm about to play gets fucking nuts. Because this is, Connor, really I think your, I think your, uh, your Wi Fi is bad. Your video is slowing down again, too. And your sound is, I think it's your video, uh, your Wi Fi. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, how am I now? It's your Wi Fi. I'm going to play the video. Let me go upstairs and fix the Wi Fi. Give me two seconds. Go oh, fucking fix that, bro. Migrants who Fix reached it. the border. I spoke with former U.S. Border Patrol Chief Ronald Vitiello on this program yesterday about the battle between the federal government and state government. Watch. Texas is doing more to help protect our border and national security, homeland security, than any other entity except maybe the front line of DHS. And so this ruling by the court to stay the implementation of SB4 uh, is a setback for sure. Um, but we all we all know that Texas is going to remain in this fight to protect us. And so we hope that this review goes quickly. Two things about this guy. I mean, obviously, I'm going to state the obvious. He well, looks like a penis. Court was so that's one. Uh, he also looks like he definitely Dan works Patrick, his butt off to keep immigrants Governor, out of the border. Lieutenant you know, that Governor's guy probably Texas wakes up in the middle of the night with nightmares. Like, yeah, fucking I mean, immigrants I'm crossing the fucking border, man. Fucking horrible cold sweats and shit. And then, yeah, he looks like a penis. Every once in a while when he's talking and he gets really worked up in an interview, he pulls out his handkerchief and just like wipes the splooge that drips down from the top. Tip and, them from you know, starting keeps to enforce going. it, and now this appeals court has, which again to go immediately against the USSC is is very alarming, and we have to really understand why. But this is this is a this is a this is the election right here in a nutshell. This border, this is an invasion, and then on top of this new decision from a district judge yesterday, a district court judge stating about the uh, they are allowed to have weapons. You know, if you have 10 million people coming to your country, and now they can uh, have the right to bear arms. Yeah, this shit was. Uh, weapons and bearing arms is out of this uh, fucking world, man. They're gonna give them, like they they're already getting everything. They're getting more rights than we are. We should just do the opposite. We should just go over to Mexico, break the border, and just start doing. I mean, you can't have firearms over there. They're already cool. Yeah, never mind. We need to be more like Mexico. Migrants owning firearms is unconstitutional. When applied to a non-citizen who cool has Mexican never pharmacies that tell you like fentanyl for ibuprofen. To me, this seems like insanity. Um, I understand why you say that, but I actually support that, and I'll tell you why. The right to bear arms is the law of the land. It's guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, as is freedom of speech, as is freedom of religion, as is a right to a fair trial and a jury by your peers. So if you support the Bill of Rights, 
and all of the guarantees that that uh, sacred piece of paper uh, ensures for um, Americans and you respect it as the law of the land, you have to ensure it for everyone who is on this land. As awkward as that sounds, and I tell you why, if you say, yeah, but things have changed and so we can't do it for this group right now because it's immigration. Well, they're crazy, illegally on this land. Actually, um, you're Fucking actually chipping job. away at the cornerstone. Of you're not chipping country. away you because you're supposed because to come in through fucking so proper passages and shit. Country illegally is not chipping away. Sorry, anything. let me see We're if I can fix this. I, uh, these are separate. These so last night or the night before my fucking, um, all my internet cut out out of nowhere. I you you cut the out. internet of your swim trunks out? Yes. No, I, uh, all the internet cut out and then I called Xfinity and they erased all my internet information. So I've been fighting with it for the past day and a half trying to get, let me see if I can, uh, so yeah, you saw the thing about the. Sorry, I watched this video. Yeah, and this me. guy's like, well, you know, the right to bear arms, and I might have to stick up for that because, you know, you have to file the, the Bill of Rights and everything. And, and it's like, bro, but these people are coming here illegally. Like, they're, they're the, already the Bill breaking. Of in the Constitution was made for American citizens, not for illegal immigrants. Yep. It has nothing to fucking do with them. Get the fuck out of this. Get out of here. If so the country, people, people that come on vacation, then they should be allowed to, the right to bear arms. I, this is the like, most ridiculous thing. By the way, Xfinity, yes, Pablo. By the way, this is the same. The judge that did this is the same dude who a couple of years ago wanted to ban guns. He's a Democratic judge. It goes to show you how much they fucking hate you. They really fucking hate you as an American because they would instantly go, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. But instead, they're like, nah, just give the illegals guns. By the way, also, the fucking illegals can now be cops. They don't have to be. They don't have to go through a citizenship test or anything like that. This is fucking Imagine crazy. that. Imagine that getting pulled over and the fuck beaten out of you by a bunch of fucking illegal cops. <clears throat> that sounds like a that's really just gonna, That's just going to be the cartel them. infiltrating American soil and then that's selling exactly drugs on our land. That's all that's going to be. That they're just they know they can make so much money on drugs and by they, you know who I mean, and they they can make so much money on drugs and they do and they just want to make it easier for them to get their drugs in the country this is the a war insane. on drugs a war on drugs with sam elliott let me see if this is now working on this thing if not i have to go click the w-a-p-t-s <coughs> wops yeah the wops button. you got an italian button i got an italian button it gets rid of all the fucking it gets rid of all the blacks in your neighborhood and you wear one of those cool fucking chili pepper necklaces or what is that a, a curly dick the curly I dick gold necklace not. I fucking can't the bullhorn, the bullhorn that they put in their ass. Um, I might have to hop button. up and click that button one more time. Hold on. You and these fucking button clicks, bro. You and these fucking button clicks. You and these button clicks. Is that what you said? Mm. Mm -hmm. right. What the uh, hell do I'll you think it. of yourself? <laughs> I wonder if you could play that, but I think you would get struck in because that guy's got a hundred thousand subs. Struck in. Yeah. Struck in, got my right, pants down, got caught fucking. There shouldn't be <laughs> illegals coming in across the border. But once they're here, they are in this land, and there are laws in this land yeah. guaranteed by the Bill of Rights, and you have to respect that out of consistency. They shouldn't be here in the first place. Right. But that's a separate issue. Well, it's mm. unfortunately all these issues now are one issue because you've got illegal people from foreign countries coming into this country some of whom we don't know what their motivations are what their intentions are and right. now they're able to hold a gun thomas your reaction welcome to the program she gets it. well you know she i'm sat here like a fool because i came in legally i think you know i, I should have swam the river and i had right. got a hotel and a credit card and all these things that's right um, well, but, you know, it, it is crazy and if you think about the politics of this who is supporting this there aren't that many democrats out there that are really calling for an open border and calling for giving guns to migrants you know these things but the biden administration Administration are pursuing it so hard. It's a real it's question. Right. Why are they chasing this so much? It's not popular with anyone. Mm -hmm. So we, we're not quite sure why they're after this so desperately. It does well, make well, it we have some idea. We, we have yeah. some idea. A lot of things are when, about the when Biden the administration. census is done exactly. and the census captures all of the people yeah. living in a certain region, if there are more people in Democrat run sanctuary cities, then they'll get more congressional seats. So the congressional Democrats are actually winning 
on all of this when it comes to the census, whether or not these people are going to be allowed at, in some way, shape or form to vote yeah, that's, that's fucking is another disgusting. question. But there's a lot of people who expect that is the reason they're doing this. It's looking very likely. Yeah, I didn't want to believe it, but it's looking very likely. It sure is. This is a developing story this morning. We are just getting started. We're going to be following this breaking news all morning long. So stay right here. It's a good way to get votes. You know, but let a bunch of illegals in under your uh, power and then just have them all vote for you. That sounds pretty good. Same thing with the cops. You'd have your own police force, a bunch of fucking illegals. That's crazy. Take all the money from the country that everybody's working for and give it to them too. That sounds about right. So now I'm just sitting here all alone. No Connor. Oh, there he is. Hi, Connor. Hi, Connor. Sorry about that. It reset itself again because fuck me in the ass. Why would it work? Sure, 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 sure. Sure, sure. There we go. Uh, let me connect to that one. Fuck you, Xfinity. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous, bro. The whole, it's, it's just getting crazier and crazier. Like, they're they're easing one thing at a time. Like, allow them in, and then Connor froze again. Um, But it's just like allowing them one thing at a time here and there. Like, we'll do this, we'll do this. And then eventually when you stand back and look at the whole, it's like they have more rights than we do. Whereas if they had just done all that at once, nobody, nobody would side with it or back it. But you sneak these things in one at a time, and then eventually they're just... These, these illegals have am, I, so am I still power. here or is it is it gone? You're there. You were frozen for a second, but I see you yeah, now. Okay, okay, so it worked. Um, dude, it's it's beyond fucked. Like in New York City, it in order for and he's gone. No. Well, I'm here. Let me uh. Let's find something to to view while Connor figures out a situation. We can get back to the the talk. I wasn't prepared for this, so my apologies. <laughs> my fucking apologies. There we go. I, I put you back, back the again, one. but it, it, can, how, can you? Hear I don't him trust you. I could hear you. I don't trust you though. Um, can you see me? I can see you, but like I said, I don't trust you. I don't either. But um, a couple of years ago, it took a couple of years for the case to actually make the New York Supreme Court. Um, they ruled that it is unconstitutional to ban handguns in New York City. The workaround that the government did was to, um, the workaround was to make every you know how they have like you can't bring guns in certain places and shit like that, like yeah. certain they call them safe zones or whatever the fuck you want to call them. They designated the entire thing of the city as a safe zone. That's how they got around it. It is so hard to get a rifle or a shotgun in the city. You have to wait six months to one year for a shotgun. But a bunch of people come over here and it's all willy nilly. Hey, let's give them fucking guns. This is the craziest shit I've ever seen. This is going to lead to a lot of shit, especially on the south of the fucking border. Are People are so to manipulated to into I, thinking I, that this is all a good idea and then that this admi administration is actually doing a good job. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts. Like I, somebody that supports that's not even worth trying to talk to them. It's like you are so far gone. Well, the government's far gone. They used to they, at least, you know what I, I respected years ago when they sat there and they used to include secret shit, but give you freedoms, like certain freedoms back and shit like that. At least they used to hide the fact that they fucking hate us. And yeah, now they blatant about now, it. They, they make us work hard, take our money, and give it away to other people, which is really right. themselves in return, just under yes. a different false name. Oh, of course, of course. Oh, but this, like this, this is, is my this is my my organization that does studies in another country. We're going to give them eleven million dollars or or whatever million dollars it is, and it just gets funneled right into their pockets. And their organizations and their friends are all board on the board, and it's not this is this blows my mind and here's my tinfoil hat theory about this i think they're gonna let this happen they're gonna let the people come over here and kill a lot of people because it's gonna happen and then all of a sudden there's gonna be calls for gun control more than ever yeah. and from republicans too don't let the republicans be like well we won't ever do it they're gonna fucking do it they've already done it it happens every fucking year and I think this is gonna get it's gonna get really dark soon. <laughs> start, buy, start buying them before they uh, stop you. I got one for every room of the house. The only one I'm missing is for the uh, shitter. 
Yeah, I'm, I got, guilty. I, I'm, I'm getting a shotgun yet. I'm getting a shotgun for my toilet just because of big pun. Just because he had that line, so people can't hit me while I'm shitting. I'm gonna get a little uh little snub nose thing to hide behind the toilet tank just because of the godfather. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking one of the worst movies of all time. The second one's good. It's all right. I the third one is it's got terrible. good scenes. Like I like the scene when they're they're cleaning house. Oh, uh, it's, baptism it's, by fire. That's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. That one dude's getting the massage. He just looks up and gets shot in the eye through the glass. <laughs> Mo Green. Yeah. Mo yeah. Greenberg. He's like, oh, you shot me in my fucking eyes. How fucking dare you? Oh, fucking speaking of. It's weird. I Mo hear a sound in the background. Speaking of uh, certain people, this, if you thought the gun rights thing is going to piss you off. A new trend on TikTok causing alarm bells to ring nationwide. They're not squatters' rights, they're your rights. Users sharing tips on how to live for free using squatters' rights. A Venezuelan migrant with half a million followers going viral for posting a video instructing migrants how to invade American homes and invoke squatters' rights. Ya que me enteré que existe a tragic situation unfolding in New York City, where a 52-year-old woman was found dead, her body stuffed in a duffel bag. NYPD believes squatters took over the home while no one was there for months, killing the woman when she returned. There is virtually no recourse for when someone is gaming the system here. Police catching and arresting two teenagers. There, there are certain things I would love to say about this without getting completely smoked off of every platform. However, if you've ever seen a 1974 movie called Death Wish, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is fucking insane. This is the thing that always worries me about, like, uh, I think it's the only thing that's worried me, really, since I've moved up here. And you guys are back in New York, like you and mom. Like, I, it would, if something happened, it would, for me, have to be a suicide mission. <laughs> I'd be going back being like, hey, I'm not going to make it out of this one. Yeah, so, oh, man. I, I, I wouldn't bother calling the cops because you know you have no recourse, so I would just have to take recourse right there. It'd have to be like a Rambo type thing. Not a Rambo, uh, a Punisher type thing. What's up, CK Benza, that handsome fucker? Um, dude, it, it's, this is, it's again, like I said before, it's, it's a really really dark time in America and we're, the, the, the worst part is, is we're not going to bounce back from this. It's never going to go away. This is going to become what they call the new normal. They're going to say they're going to get rid of it and pass all this bullshit legislation, but at the end of the day, we're, we're uh, kind of all fucked. And like I said, hey, if you don't have one, get one. Get a piece. I, I, I like uh, James. James buys gold and silver. That's like his big fall plan. God bless you. Um, I, I buy brass. I buy brass. That's all I buy. I have, like I said, one for every one. Big online. My, no, my brother James buy gold and silver. I invest in brass, Captain. What are you the best the gold? That's more biggie. Yeah, that was more biggie. Fuck. No, but it, this is fucking crazy. And I went to last week. Like I said, I did that fucking the St. Patrick's Day parade for the army. Which, by the way, last one. So I'm happy about that. June 10th, I'm finally fucking free. Um. I, I was in the city and it was just a fucking shithole. By the way, I used to have a joke that New Jersey was the worst smelling state. It's not anymore. Manhattan smells like fucking shit. Yeah, it's not a state. It's just the worst city. It really is. <laughs> when you do get right into New Jersey from the city, it looks like Chemical Plant Zone from Sonic. It's just Sonic. Like I've said that years ago. It's very funny that you brought that up. Oh, you really we wrote. Oh man, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You know what? They'll they'll just look the same. Oh, I hey, watch yourself. I heard. Yeah, I I know it was going to come out of your mouth for a second. No, I know it was going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> You're going to say we're having fun. We're having fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm just being a stupid. I'm ashamed man. of you. <laughs> like, yeah, ashamed. get get in line. Hey, Joey, are you doing anything later today, or you're probably just heading to bed, right? Should have been there last night. You fell asleep. I get, I get a, I, I ended up in a, a VC with Trippy. That's why I asked you that question at two in the morning about the, um, the, the EQ and shit like that. And then she was in there, and all of a sudden I hear, 
<laughs> and I look and it's just her sound thing going off. And I was like, oh, she passed the fuck out. That is so fucking funny. And uh, so did Autist, too, by the way. Autist passed out within like 20 minutes. He's like, I just love Japanese wrestling. And then all of a sudden I hear him and you hear him going. <laughs> and I was like, we just were talking about Japanese wrestling. What the fuck is this? For the murder in Queens, police arresting a woman earlier this week for unlawful eviction when she tried to kick squatters out of a house she owns. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. In New York City, squatters are considered legal residents after 30 days. In Washington state, a judge siding with a squatter, granting him a restraining order against the owner of a $2 million home. Aren't you the one technically trespassing? Neighbors staging. $2 million home. Like and I said, a lot to squat in your yeah. shit. Mm, no. I, again, I, I, would, I would take vacation time and I would just camp and wait for them to just let the guard down for a second. Fuck like that. I said, and again, I'm not trying to portray like a tough guy thing, but like now that I own a home, try it. And the whole thing, so it's 30 days it takes you to get your, your place no, back. So you, have to make, you have to make them disappear for 30 days. 60. It's six months. New York, New York is six months. You have six months as squatters' rights. Six months. And by the way, for the people who like, uh, like, ju remember Justin years ago? Yeah. Justin's mom was evicted from a house. And on the last day before they moved, she destroyed every fucking wall of that house, which, by the way, scumbag fucking, uh, scumbag move. Like, yeah. it's a scumbag move. Yeah. But it's like, you don't know what shape your house is going to be in when you get it back. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really fucked up that they're caught it, kind of siding with these people. Like, dude, get them the fuck out. It's the first day. And again, with this lady, it's a $2 million house. I understand she has money or maybe maybe the property increased in value. But it's like, get the fuck out of my house. Like, what the fuck are you doing? There, there shouldn't have to be any argument at all. It, it shouldn't even have to be any words said. It should just be like, the fact that we're in your house, they, they should be arrested and go to jail for a long time for trespassing, all this different shit. But somehow we've worked it around. That's the same thing with like years ago, that lawsuit with the person trying to break into the house. They fell through the skylight on yeah. some knives stand yeah. themselves through the homeowner. It's the same thing. It's like getting the hot coffee from McDonald's and suing them because it was hot. Yes. It's just, it's this whole fucking, I don't, I don't know why someone would ever think this is right. It takes a really twisted person to like come up with these ideas. Uh, Warfist, I would. Uh, Warfist, I like you, but I can't agree with that because there are squatters' rights shouldn't people, apply to anybody. Yeah, there are people who are born here, and they're just pieces of shit. They're just pieces of shit. Do you want some fucking like, Californian homeless dude it, to just sit? It, this, what's the difference if it's a if somebody squats in your house? What you you'd be okay with it as long as they were a citizen? And I like I mean, you know like, you could stay for a couple months. Like no, I I would tear into them. I, I agree with Warfist on a lot of shit. Like, just, like I I can't agree with that. That's way too insane for me. Do you agree uh, with Warfist? Huh? Do you agree with his Warfist? Right in your I want him to fit in the ass so fucking hard. No. Um, it's just it's crazy like the, nobody should get squatters rights you're either no. homeless or you're not homeless there, that there's that shouldn't a, even be a thing squatters rights I gotta just give legally stealing, it's legally stealing someone's property for a brief period of time it's an, it's just a different way of putting it hold on Warfus. i'm giving you a fucking wrench um let me play the rest of this. In protests in favor of the homeowner. What is this, third world country? The problem is so bad in California, you can now hire the squatter squad to come remove people from your property. Awesome. The growing problem bringing attention to existing <laughs> local squad. and state That's laws dope. that side go, against the homeowner, are. igniting a push to have them changed. I'm Kayla Gaskins reporting. Pretty girl. Squatter squad. That is a really good group right there. That's like the squad that goes out to pedos. Play the heroes well, we don't that's, Oh, fuck. You know what? I wasn't going to play it, but now that you've said it, let's see. Squatter Squad. There we go. Uh, he's been brought on Dr. Phil for, I think I played this a couple months ago, but he's been brought on Dr. Phil for, um, Dr. Phil said it was ambushing. It's not. So, Thanks this for joining us. Than... We have an exclusive interview. I this think he's younger than this guy last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another one, but this guy's younger than I am, and um, he's like 24. 
and his whole thing was to go out and just catch child molesters. And by the way, on Twitter or X, whatever the fucking whole thing, um, after the whatever the name change was, um, there's people who go after him and they're like, you're a piece of shit for exposing child predators. And it's like, no, he's a fucking hero. He's got, no. I think he's got 40 something states. He's got a squad. Well, I'm not, not saying worthless, but I'm saying those are the same people that like agree with giving guns to migrants and. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, how would you left expose a child predator? Like, what do you mean? Why wouldn't I expose a child predator? I don't get that. Very left leaning people. Uh, my whole sheeple was nuked after I was modded. Well, don't get me nuked. I gave you a wrench out of the goodness of my heart. I compromised. Sheeple interview today with the person who nabbed a suspected local child predator predator poachers a group that goes after underage sex crime offenders conducted a sting at the airport and that sting led to an arrest by lafayette police 46 year old jerry case jr uh, is airport that means this guy that means this guy flew to fuck a kid yeah, yeah 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 i got you you know who that looks like the pilot that goes crazy in the x-files when the wife's like, he's in the corner of the house and he's got the burns on his skin. He's just a bald guy with the same. You, you, you think all bald guys look the same. You're reading like a tard, Connor. I'm a fucking tard. Decent behavior with a juvenile. Computer aided solicitation of a juvenile. Sexual abuse with an animal. And pornography oh involving God. juveniles. Tonight, only on 10, Predator Poachers is interviewed by KLFY senior reporter Renee Allen. First, however, we must warn you, the content and video may be disturbing to some viewers. Alex Rosen is a representative of Predator Poachers. Rosen says he was at the Lafayette <laughs> Airport on Monday to meet Case, okay, who he says was there to meet a 12-year-old he thought he was dealing with online. You video chat, make sure that who you are, you know what I mean? And, and Alex Rosen of Predator Poachers says the case of Jerry Case Jr. has been on their radar for almost a month. He sent videos um, of him uh, be pleasuring himself. He sent videos of his own daughter. Here's the other thing about this guy that I really like. Like, um, If you watch his videos, one, he has somebody, I, it's, I forgot where the girl is. I think she's in Virginia, but she'll pose as a young girl. She's not. She's like 25. Then he'll he befriends these people. Gordon Flowers, say Gordon Flowers is the man. Hell yeah, dude, that's his nickname. He'll um he'll befriend these people, and then he gets them to admit the entire crime. And instead of saying I'm going to call the police on you, he'll just look towards his camera and be like, Hey, can you go to the car and get me some like fried pickles or some shit? And the cops show up, and then he has them admit to the cops, like, Yeah, I've got child porn on my computer and shit like that. Like, dude, this dude, he is so fucking thorough. Like, except for the only time he had a problem was Maine. Maine doesn't um, go after uh, pedophiles and shit like that. So Maine let the guys go. And he was just like, well, I'm not going to do any more stings in Maine. It's not worth it. It's like, that sucks. Dog pleasuring him. Also, Rosen provides an audio recording of Case and the supposed 12-year-old who actually, unbeknownst to Case, as an adult female with the predator poachers. I'm nervous with What'd you say? Your mic was very low I for two seconds. This woman, the, 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 she said, yeah, like she 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 and talks like this. Uh, if you're a chum on the internet, oh, wow, that's moving up quick. You're fucked when you see Yukon Cornelius at your door. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Don Yukon Cornelius, greatest hitman of them all. Definitely the have to to squad to Cornelius vibes. Uh, nah, man, I, I can't do that, man. Because there's there's way too much in Long Island with the squatters and shit. Like I said, my friend's mom did it once, and she destroyed the entire house. I'm sure not all people are like that, but there are people that are going to destroy the house just out of habit, uh, or not out of habit, just out of being spiteful. So, I mean, like I, I get what you're saying. Citizens should here should have a priority over illegals, but I just don't think squatting's the way to go. Um, it's the same thing with that argument with vets. Like, why are we giving free housing to illegals when there's a million vets out there or whatever who are homeless? They don't give a fuck about you. I don't care. They don't care about vets. So even the citizen thing, like, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't fucking, it, it, that's, it doesn't gelled with me. Right. 
especially because like i said people are that's your property like if you buy that fucking property that's yours nobody should be able to go in there and even with the same thing with billionaires and millionaires like i hate them but at the same time it's like that's yeah well that's theirs they bought it so i don't know I know I'm nervous already. Rosen says Case was under the assumption the girl was flying in from Huntsville with another underage female friend to visit family in Lafayette. He was just waiting, standing across from three cops that were just there. I mean, that didn't even phase him at all. Rosen says Case eventually agreed to talk about it outside. Um, he admitted to wanting to do intimate things with these two girls. He admitted to talking to 20 or 30 other um, profiles that at least represented themselves as underage. Rosen explains Case came off nervous to be confronted. He started blaming Facebook for this his problem. He started blaming other people for him being into this stuff. Like the bestiality video, he claimed that it was someone else's idea for him to go do it. Predator Poachers has other... In Alaska, you can occupy a cabin in the event of an emergency or just stay the night. It's usually understood that you don't have to be a uh, civilian or industry. Or, yeah, no, no, no. That's fine. I, I totally get you there, Orifice. I, I 100% agree, especially in Alaska. You will die in the middle of the night with the snow. That is fine. And there's places in Finland, too, um, that have they, they literally set cabins up on the side of the road. And whatever you take, they kind of expect you to put back in. But like regular everyday people just occupying a dwelling, like I, I can't, I can't get on board with that. That's kind of a weird fucking thing to to even try to understand. Like if I was like moving, moving in, making yourself comfortable, and staying there for like an extended period of time with no intent of bettering yourself, so you can get in a situation to get out. Like, mm. like it was. However, hear me out. Here's the one gray area. If you see a house, like. Because where I grew up, especially after Hurricane Sandy, if you see a house that's abandoned and you know it's abandoned, nobody lives there, all for it. Go for it. Go fucking hide in there. I don't give a shit. As long as you don't tear it up and you're not a fucking, you're leaving syringes everywhere. Do you remember that abandoned house we found? Black dildo. <sighs> the big black misty dildo that we found. There was yeah. a lot of weird things about that house. It was an abandoned house. We found, well, leading up to remember, we found that giant pack of dog footprints going up. There was like yes, 10 packs of prints. Weird. Yeah, we were like, so, so we were expecting to see a bunch of dogs because we didn't see prints going out, but it looked like mad dogs went in this house to like chill. And then we went and then we found an old box and then a bunch of old sex toys that were definitely from like the late Eight. 80s, early 90s. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really old, like butt plugs and everything. And it was like dogs ran in there and must have just like had a wild orgy and just like <laughs> they never came out. They just like went to heaven after that. I guess that was it for them. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, was, that was weird. Dude. Weird though. Yeah, that was weird. An abandoned house with some butt plugs, dildos, and dog prints. Wasn't that a Beck album? Butt plugs, uh, dildos, and dog prints. <clears throat> Did that? I, I remember it being the weirdest box I've ever seen because it had that woman on the front. But it had that. Weird I just remember belt. it was like gray with like a weird, um, the a, weird. It was gray graphics. with a woman on the front, and then it said "love" in pink, like bloomy letters. But then it was a huge fucking black fist. And yeah. I remember you looked at me and you were like, holy shit. It was like one of those things you hope to find in an abandoned house. And like what you actually do, it's just like, uh, is this real life? Did I really find this? Uh, do you remember do you remember John Sneck jumps or no? Fuck yeah, bro. So John Sneck jumps. Somebody brought a... Um, hold on. Uh, uh, we knew some kid that had to poop and he went up over and jump and when he landed he shit his pants. He had to bike home with shit on his pants, Joe Widell. <laughs> we kept, what I was James doing. kept egging him on to do one more jump and he did. And that, that was his last jump. Actually it's eighteen forty one war fist. Um eighteen forty one. So maybe after that depression during the eighteen thirties, um, they probably introduced it. And the, the country was way smaller back then. Um no, there was uh somebody moved a desk into John so Nobody was born here in Long Island. Tabletop, blah Yes, there was tabletops. However, one of the tabletops was a was a desk, a computer desk. And one day, I see the fucking handle sticking out, and I'm like, "Oh, I wonder what's in there." I open it up, and it's 1980 something porn. And it was yeah. like these chicks with like, 
you guys hear about the man in the oh dude yeah yeah yeah. oh yeah i'll bring that up in a second yeah oh yeah planet fitness is losing a lot of fucking money for even attempting to normalize that shit but uh yeah it was like 1987 or 88 porn and it was like bush and i remember looking at it and i was like <laughs> you don't find that anymore we used to find porn in the woods all the time growing up oh, and stuff in long island it was nobody, very nobody porn. yeah long, long island, island had a lush big, big bush porn, porn. A lot of good big bush porn. Nothing like good big bush porn in a Budweiser. There ain't nothing like there ain't good dash. There ain't nothing like good porn, Micah. Uh, let me see if I can. I think this is it. Show this tab instead. So I'll, I'll let her talk, and then I'll explain what happened afterwards. Well, I was offended. I took a picture of him, and I asked him, why are you there? You're a man with a penis. Why are you in the women's locker room? And he justified yeah. by saying, I'm queer LGB. And I said, you shouldn't be in the women's locker room. Well, I left. Oh, I can't fucking that. Anyway, some dude was, some dude was changing in a woman's locker room. And then they banned her membership for complaining. Oh, However, there's been such a boycott on Planet Fitness. They lost something like $22 billion yesterday. Nice. And they're still standing by their decision, which it's like, that's kind of fucking weird. Like, that's, you're losing money. You have to figure this out. Um, let's see if the, ah, God, I'm going to hate the music, but. This is definitely one of those preset beats on magic music. By the way, hold on. I have to say this. If you're one of those people who, if you go to Planet Fitness and then you tweet about how you're canceling your membership, I just want to let you know that you are just as fucking gay as they are. It's funny. It's you go back and look at their membership. They probably went like four times every year and just paid four for that membership. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't when you tweet something like that, it really doesn't have an effect. Just cancel your membership and and be quiet about it and then let them lose money. No, nobody gives a shit about this dude or anybody else. Brian Fornicate. <laughs> Brian Fornicate. <laughs> uh you know what? Let me see on the ongoing boycotts, the hundreds of him. Let me see on the side real quick before I pull up the main thing of the show. How much they lost. Vain. vain. Before I pull out my main vein, let me see how much we're about to lose. Before I pull out my main vein, let me see how much we're about to lose. Inches wise. Uh, so last night they lost 350,000 members. Nice. Uh, they lost 400 million last night. Nice. 25% in total value. Yeah, don't fucking don't be one of those fucking weirdos who tweets it out. Just fucking do it. All right. So this was, by the way, uh, I canceled Nationalist Social Card back in 1945. Never told a soul, but the Pope moved to Argentina. <laughs> right. There was a really cool dude who moved to Argentina in uh, 1945. Hitler. <laughs> I've been, been saying that for a long time. He was definitely there, especially because this uh, the FBI had a picture of him. You know that, they, right? Yeah, they purchased so much. Well, they didn't purchase. They took so much info. Well, no, there's there was a there's a redacted file that just came out. Uh, I think it was last year, and it was the FBI. And they talked about how they had kind of found him, but they couldn't 100 percent say if it was him or not. And I'm pretty sure the same town that that guy died in in 19, I think it was like 56. It was nothing but like Nazi memorabilia, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, that had to have been him." Same thing, like same, just. Grew a beer and all this shit. It's really crazy. They uh, let me see if I can find that FBI Hitler picture. It's it's awesome. It's so, not awesome. So it's it's sweet pick. awesome because like it's sweet pick. No, it's awesome because it's like oh, so he did live. Bro, there's there no you. way he just died in a bunker like that. So that was that's the redacted file. It's funny because I was able to read every word on that. You, yeah, I know you were. 
Maybe you are with your fucking improving eyesight and shit. Such I read so quick and sucks. I read, nice, big I read that whole thing head. when I posted. Oh, is that it? There you go. That was the one the FBI got a hold of. Is that dude? <laughs> Be crazy just to see him as something else, as a different person, see a different face that was that evil. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy fucking sucked. But I mean, apparently, according to the FBI, he might have been. Might have been still alive in 47. Uh, you asked me about this today. So this is the main... By the way, you came up with the name of the show today. And it worked so fucking well. Um, you asked me about this if I saw it. And I gave you a pretty good fucking rebuttal. But I would love to play the fucking trailer for you. In the early 90s, Nickelodeon was kid everything. And you better hope that your house had cable. We wasn't there to educate you. We were there to have fun, to get slimed, to be entertained. And this is when Dan Schneider arrives. Nickelodeon. By the way, if I was ever at a podium giving some weird speech and you slime me, I'm going to fucking kill you. I've slimed you so many times during speeches, but different types of slime. That's different, man. This is cum. This is come. This chick looks like she has uh, a little bit of the downies. Bro, bro, bro. So we've been watching this, and Darlene's like, the late with Are the, you the, watching the, Love on the Spectrum? Oh, no, no. I think you said that you were watching. No, so we've been watching this, and Darlene's like, the lady that gives the interviews, she looks like she has short arms. She's funny looking. I was like, the past night, a couple nights we've been watching this, I just didn't want to say, but I've been thinking that she looks like she has a little bit of Down syndrome. And she's like, no, she doesn't. I was like, yes, she does. And it's funny you said that. I was like, she's got the Carolina effect, you know? <laughs> My buddy Marty has very short arms, and we call him T Rex. Ooh, it's good. But this chick looks like she has fucking down. It sucks you can't see my mouse on screen, but I'm circling her face uh, with excitement. She does. She has Hands downy open. features. Yes, she has Shane Gillis face. Boy, he created these shows that were hugely successful for them. No one had ever really done sketch comedy starring kids for kids. He launched the careers of child actors. Remember him in Better Off Dead? Stars. Yeah, dude, you told me that. Years, that was surprising. I forgot that. I didn't know looked familiar. But... but that marked one of the darkest chapters. Okay. So. Oh, wait. Oh, Working for Dan was like being in an abusive relationship. Dan's treatment of people on his shows was an open secret. So my lawyer filed complaints, gender discrimination, hostile work environment, harassment, and it was so devastating. How safe can any kids be in that environment? There would be even bigger problems down the line with actual pedophiles on set. These are three predators who worked at Nickelodeon, all in a short amount of time. Wait, guys, what are you predators at? slash recruiters. It was a toxic environment. Yes. I mean, so apparently, during that same time, I I don't know how, I can't verify because I can't find the video. But do you remember um, what was her name? Was it, is it Mary Beth Denver? That was the fat chick on Nickelodeon in the late nineties, early two thousands. There was a joke that he wrote for her. I had the picture pulled up. Apparently, it's his real subtitle. She said, uh, that was a great episode of Rugrats. I kind of want to die, but Nickelodeon has me on suicide watch. Anyway, Doug is on next. Stay tuned. Like, fucking holy shit. Yeah, that dude. Was not been. In the 90s. Yeah. So he, he he's like, he, uh, you could, yeah, continue with this. I'm not a good, no, what were you going to say? No, continue with this. I'm just trying to figure out why Dewey is so horny in the chat always. People what? We were there for so many hours. You get comfortable with people until you're not. I had no idea what I was saving my son from. Danny? It's a house of horrors. They find this enormous trove of child pornography. The officer said we found Ziploc bags, each one with a girl's name on it. 11 charges of child sexual abuse related to a child actor. It made me wonder who was being hurt. I've been waiting 17 years for oh, I know today. Well, it wasn't dealing with anybody on the shows or anything, right? It was a child actor. On one of our shows? Yes. Have you nope. ever told your story publicly before? Oh, 
a couple things about this that that really piss me off. So one, nothing's going to happen to Dan Schneider, and that's no. what, the most thing that really pisses me off. Because if you go back and you start reading about all these different things, there's a lot of really creepy, fucked up things. The the, the tweets that he had to delete because I think his. I think people thought his Twitter might have been Dan Schneider, but I know his production company uh, company was called Schneider's Bakery with his wife. And he used to tweet pictures of children's feet. He has a foot fetish. That's fucking weird. I don't so, like that. Th- there was there was like a, a decent amount about Dan Schneider in the um Dan Schneider in the um in the documentary, but then it starts going into like other things. But there's things they don't talk about, like you know, they, they just made it, made it seem like he was pretty bad and he was pretty inappropriate and stuff like that. But then, you know how Amanda Bynes has been on like a fucking downward spiral lately and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, she had another account on Twitter that um, people know it was her because she posted pictures. It was obvious it was her account. But um, she had had one post and it was like alluding to the fact that it was like, imagine being 13 and getting pregnant by your boss that you trusted and having to have an abortion. So basically he he was also sleeping with her and got her pregnant at 13 and made her have an abortion. Like it's, so there's a lot more about the Dan Schneider shit that they didn't want to say on there that will come out, but. But they're, yeah, but they're also, they talk about a lot of people, but the one thing that pisses me off. So this documentary just came out and in 2016 or 17, the one podcast I continuously watch other than come town is revenge of the Sis, uh, with you grew up with Mersh, um, and Royce Lopez. And in 2017, they were getting people to, or they were, they found out about this whole thing and they sat there and they had this whole, I mean, I remember it, it had to have been six months where they were going after this guy and getting people, um, from Nickelodeon who had worked there to come on and tell their story. Now, I'm not going to say it was them, but there was at one point, there was enough pressure to Nickelodeon to get rid of Dan Schneider in 2017. I, I It just sucks because this documentary came out and now you have guys like that fucking idiot, Dom LaCour, who are taking their part of their interview, by the way, and he's watermarking it and and cutting out their fucking faces. And I think that's a fucking travesty because this is seven years before anything came out. And these guys were so ahead of the fucking curve. And they've been ahead of the curve on a lot of shit. Same thing with Owen Benjamin, Stephen Crowder. This goes on. And it sucks because this is one of their classic clips. Uh, I want to play this for a couple seconds. But they were way ahead of everybody else when it came to the Dan Schneider shit. And it sucks because they just will not get credit for it. And I, I think that's fucking, that kind of sucks. But like, by the I way, usually don't post on here, but back in seven, Dan Schneider hosted an audition event for child actors where you had to show up barefoot and film your audition, putting your feet to the camera, talking about how much you love being without shoes. I'd do anything now to find that audition call listing. So would I, uh, because it's the whole reason why I'm not in the industry anymore. My mom was in charge, pulled me out, telling me that is sick and people like him should be exposed. So obviously I was like, Hey, you mind coming on the show? Cause we're sort of, uh, this is our thing right now. So in 1997, <laughs> I, was really well. I think this is, uh, um, it's on a rational times who made the claim. We would go on auditions just to different places. And eventually I got a manager and an agent um, who would send me on audition calls for, you know, mini, well, like little things like commercials and everything. And then uh, as I started growing in my career, uh, this is still, this in is 2007, my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. Um, I personally, at the time, I watched a ton of Nickelodeon and I was very immersed in that lifestyle. So I wanted to pursue it. Um, Yeah, this is from July 2017. So seven fucking years ago, they were ahead of this. And it just, like I said, it it really blows that they had all this evidence. And the documentary was like, oh, nah, we'll figure it out. Um, RTC, that's when I found them. I remember when they had call-ins. Their call-ins were really good for a while. And then they got sick of people calling in drunk and they erased it. I understand. But it's fucking crazy. This all quiet on the set is coming out. And then it's like, like 
yes, I've known about Dan Schneider for so long now. And then now you're just going to come out this documentary. And again, like I said, nothing's going to happen to him. No, I mean, that, that Brian Peck guy, he got 16 months. And that was the he, guy who got, that was the, guy was, who, he was the he, acting coach. He obviously molested so many fucking kids, but he like brutally molested Drake Bell so many times that it was like oral. There was yeah. insertion of the foreign object, all this like crazy stuff. I mean, it's as crazy as you can get with rape. And then with a 15 year old, he got 16 months and is still allowed to do stuff like what the guy should have been killed easily. You don't need to be in society. Like you're, you're done. I agree. And I agree with you. And there's a lot of other people too, who get in trouble for that shit that don't like can still have contact with kids. One of the biggest examples I always write, uh, is, uh, Pete Townsend from the who. Yeah. He claims he was, I can't he was reading to the write a book cause he was molested. Like, no dude, you had child porn on your computer. Like, yeah, I, I can't listen to the who because of that whole reason. I think it, it's a kind of weird, like, that you would fucking do that. And then the other one too is if anybody saw that Beetlejuice fucking two teaser, if you notice the dad's not in it. The dad was arrested in two thousand one or two for child porn. Yep. And, and then the, I, they also the insurance wouldn't cover Alec Baldwin on set, so he wasn't yeah. on set for the new movie. Well, <laughs> no, like, he, he's he, much he, of a liability. We we we, we can't give you a policy. They said he didn't audition for the movie because there was no gunplay. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, he's being sued too. Nothing's going to happen to him. They already found the armor uh, guilty, which means he's going to be found guilty, but nothing's got, he's going to pay like a $1,500 fine or a community service that he doesn't have to fucking do. But no, they'll get off. The same reason these uh, pedos are getting off. Had it been somewhere else, he, he would have gotten more time, never enough time, but. He's a, a a recruiter, a groomer for for Hollywood, for Nickelodeon, and that's why he'll get off a little time and be allowed back in to do whatever the fuck he's got to do for them. Yeah, the only guy who ever left was that, like the dude, like I said, from the dad, who was also, by the way, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? That's the yeah, second he's one. the principal. How many referenced him? Um, he was the principal. He like he hasn't acted where nobody's hired him because of how horrific his shit was. He was making kids like I read the entire thing. He was making like fourteen year old boys pose naked in cowboy hats while he jacked off and took pictures. And it's like holy fucking shit. Yeah. The only Beetlejuice, by the way, I'm not excited about Beetlejuice too. The only one I'm excited about is this guy right here. Of course, when you're here, everybody loves it. That head is so small. Okay. Speaking of Beetlejuice, he looks like the shrunken head from Beetlejuice in the office with Juno. <laughs> you know about that food, food, right? Of course, who doesn't know about Beetlejuice? You gotta be on a fucking. Well, yeah, well if you're on a planet, Weinstein is the only one who got actual food. time. Yeah, Weinstein got time because he was their sacrificial lamb. Yeah, yeah, they gotta do something it. with someone. Yeah, if they, he if had, they he, really... also he was old. He probably couldn't recruit anymore. It wasn't useful to them. These other guys can probably they probably still have connections and they probably if still he, get. If they, if they gave, my thing is, if they actually gave a shit. Like they did with Weinstein, we would know about everything with Jeffrey Epstein. We would know about the uh, glistening Maxwell shit, the shit she's holding. Which, by the way, they they released a picture of her recently. She's she gets to run in a prison yard and exercise, so she's obviously not doing bad. She's in a fucking vacation home. You would know about all this shit, but you don't, and we'll never know it. And uh, that's why they don't release who's on the island. You, they don't want you to know, even though we have a good idea of plenty of people that were on that island. Oh Mr. yeah, Leo, yeah, yeah. Miss Oprah. Mr. Well, Chris Leo, the Chris Leo thing is really funny because I get him. No, Leonardo. Oh, but well, Chris Leo. I thought you said Chris Leo. Chris Leo is a comedian, and he was chatting some chick up on a uh, Snapchat, and she was thirteen, and he was asking her for nudes. And then there's a famous video where he somebody was just like, "Oh yeah, low snap." Like somebody was talking about Snapchat. I think maybe it was Will Sasso. Which, by the way, shout out to Will Sasso for never getting caught with any of that shit. Being the only guy from Mad TV to never get in trouble, but he even said like, like he has a joke which is like, you know, those Snapchat videos don't ever erase. And Chris D'Elia was like, "What did you say? Like they don't erase?" And he freaks out. And then two months later, he's in trouble for all that shit. But every time Chris D'Elia does a live video on Instagram, I always hit him up and I'm like, "Hey, didn't you, didn't you try to fuck a kid?" He's like, "Damn!" This and people are me. like, "Oh man, Chris D'Elia is the man." It's like, no, he tried to fucking get rid of him. Get rid of all that shit. Yeah, these people don't get in enough trouble. 
I want to play this because this the end of the show really took kind of a sour note. I think you just have a thing for him. Yeah, I know Puerto Rican, you little piece of shit. Puerto Rican people, let me hear you talk Spanish. Yeah, yeah, I'll speak Spanish, you little fucking little cop sucker. What do you got, you little fuck? I got to pause real quick because Howard Stern will hit the show instantaneously. He's so famous. He's got an alarm going off. He's jumping up this computer. He's like, Connor, what are you doing? He's doing this right now. Fucking little cop sucker. I'm right here in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, I'll speak Spanish. Hey, Pete, you know? Uh Will Sasso needs to voice the whole Madden game. Dude, Will Sasso, by the way, louder milk. That show that you showed that was the clip that you showed it was like three months ago with Vocal Fry. So I started watching the show and he's in it as like uh good night, Joey. And I He's in it, it, feel better. Character, and it is 100% fantastic and delightful. He is so fucking great in that show. Wait, I think I just figured out my board. Hold on. I was just thinking about it now. Loud and milk. That's what my wife says all the time. She's like, loud and milk. And I make these weird noises when it comes out. It's like a dam being opened for the first time. No, you didn't figure out your board. In fact, you just got rid of your sound. No, is that it? I'm good. Well, no, it sounds like you just switched over your microphone back to the computer. Oh, hold on. Yeah, hold yeah, on. Yeah. Hold on, you fucking asshole. Sure, sure. Do I sound, I sound, Do I sound good there, Micah? You sound much better there, you little fucking homo. Yeah, no, I just figured out what was wrong with it. <laughs> fucking you idiot. goddamn homosexual. You better hop on board, fucking cowboy. God. I ain't gonna get I ain't gonna get these spur marks for no reason. You better come. Arthur! Get him out of there before you come. God damn it, John. I'll come when I fear rocket. He starts coughing up blood and cum from his tuberculosis and oral. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, you got uh, you got the gay. Look at you, black and white lungs. <laughs> you should probably move down south somewhere where uh, there's no gay people. That's, so funny. That's actually a funny visual. <laughs> it's just it's not a funny visual. In a fucking hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> Black and white ice and, ice and cookies with his cough up. <laughs> Arthur, I need you to have gay sex real quick. I follow a bunch of like stupid pages, video game pages on RDR2 where people do like, they obviously modded the game and fucked with it so bad, but they'll like go and get all the people that they want to get revenge on in the game and they'll like line them up on a, um, like on a bridge and wrap or lasso around them and basically hang them all, push them off and hang them all one at a time. Oh, I still got you. Don't worry about 20 this. 20 people I hanging it. from the bottom or one of my favorites when they lasso people on the back of a train and just drag them through oh, the game. And, that. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, let me play. Let me go. Let me. I have the best thing is with this studio that I set up is I have a toilet three feet from me. I want to play this real quick because you play guitar, but there's a guy who does these things. They are probably the lowest effort. And I think you would appreciate this. And then I have to play a, vi a video for Pablo. Yeah. What do you mean I don't believe in God? I talk to him every day. What do you mean I don't support your system? Sounds like fucking Beetlejuice. I have to. What do you mean I can't get to work on time? Got nothing better to do. What do you mean I don't pay my bills? What do you think I'm broke? <laughs> if there's a new way, <laughs> oh, I'll be the first in line. Why does he sound like Beetlejuice? For the better work this time. So the whole point of this guy's channel is to just do everything as low effort as it could be. And it'll probably get mad hits too and mad likes. It's, dude, it gets seven and a half thousand. Uh, where was the other? He had a bunch of them. Yeah, speaking of new Beetlejuice, I keep seeing everybody post a trailer, sharing it like, oh my God, tagging people. You got to see this. This is crazy. This has me so hyped. And I watched it and I was like, what has you so hyped? It's a 30 second trailer and it's they shoot Beetlejuice for five seconds. seconds. There's nothing to go on. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not going to be good or I'm not hyped, but the trailer doesn't get me any more hyped. It was actually 
the most teaser Ooh, trailer it ever. It was disappointing. Disappointment I've ever seen. They yeah. literally show Michael Keaton for two seconds going, I'm back. And like, they're singing right, well, the song in the background. They're singing the oh day. My, song. By the way, I 100 fucking percent hate that as a trope. Yeah, let's bring something back from 40 fucking years ago and put you it have in. Have to, bro. Because it was like, I love Beetlejuice. I love that scene when we're at the dinner table. It's like, yeah, it's a good scene. You know, it's good. <coughs> the best scene in that Ooh, movie. I like that. You, who was the imaginary ghost there? <laughs> no, the best scene in that whole movie is the model thing. People sleep on that scene when he kicks the tree over and he goes, nice fucking model. That is the best scene of the whole movie. There's way better things in the fucking um who's the fucking dude who's the harry belafonte scene i like the sandworms those are fucking cool anytime they're in that the weird dude, weird yeah, dimension is fucking uh, awesome <laughs> the one thing i laugh about that is how bad the cgi looks on alec baldwin like the weird shaded colors around him and you're like yeah he's not there he's not in a desert that but, opening scene too when it's um all those miniatures the miniatures in the beginning when they're, they're showing mm -hmm. that whole scene when they're going through the beginning it's all just miniatures that town that's like classic 80s like any little town they're going through almost like a like a, a drone shot now <laughs> it's weird now that i think about it <laughs> i watched roadhouse it's terrible it's funny because someone i know that would never trust their uh, opinion on a movie said just watch roadhouse it was fucking awesome and i was like i want to comment oh, like I, no it wasn't like i didn't even see it i could tell you it wasn't fucking so awesome. i just for the, you know, people are gonna fucking lose their shit at this I just, for the first time in my entire life, watched Roadhouse six months ago. And guess what? It's the worst fucking, along with Lost Boys, which everybody loves Lost Boys. It's fucking terrible. So Roadhouse I used to like Lost Boys when I was young. Roadhouse is stupid. I'll agree with that. I used to watch Road, uh, I watched Lost Boys when I was younger. I thought it was really cool. And then went to go watch it last Halloween or something. And it was terrible. It wasn't good. Sexy sax dude was pretty cool, a little unnecessary, but it's not a good movie. It's not action packed. There's not much to it. It's cheesy. It's just not. It's boring. Good. Like I, I don't know. Everybody's like so hype on that movie, and it's just not there. It's like the Rolling Stones. Everybody's so hype, but it's just not there. <laughs> Fucking started on them. Um, honestly, Land of the Dead is a better movie, and that's a shit movie. I like any of those. But uh, I, I watched Roadhouse, and it was. So fucking bad, especially the scene where he fucks the chicks on the fuck on the roof, and you're like, that would never happen. Oh my god, the new crow remake. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, you know what? Fuck it, we're gonna play the trailer for that. I just don't show play you the trailer, bro. It's so st the I'm first thing the, the, the trailer is like different scenes and angles of him fucking. I'm like, this is all right. Oh, not like, that one. I see that one. I don't want to see that. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. By the way, the the original director of The Crow was just like, "Why are you fucking remaking this?" Yeah, I agree with him. He he said Brandon Lee died. Well, Brandon Lee didn't die for the movie; he was killed for the movie. Yeah, making the movie. He said it was his legacy. It should be this. this I don't know. It just it, but, everything about that movie. The time being in the nineties, the music that was there. The way, time, I, I think I, like that that that. I know you're not a fan of that movie. That's a very good movie. I, the original. One, I I've said it before maybe not on the show i 100 percent hate that fucking movie i think it's one of the worst movies that has ever made i don't understand why people like it but it was made in the 90s and that was the last best error of america so actually honestly the the best movies probably came out in the mid 90s or early 90s late yeah 80s. Like, still using uh, film before uh, they switched to digital the soundtrack was good yeah any yeah. sound Listen, you can have a shit movie, Dan, but and the soundtrack could be great. And that's fine, but no, but that there's like that's good '90s industrial, like hard techno. Just or no? I am not sure. I, I thought it was, but I want to play this for you because this is not the same guy. This is another dude who maybe. Oh no, it is the same guy. But I thought you would also enjoy this too. Yeah. Okay. This reminds me of the two that you showed me playing a rupture without ever seeing a cab. Is that you or James? What? Playing a rupture without ever seeing a cab. You ever see that? No, it was probably great. Oh, my. <laughs> I thought it was you. I've never seen it before. Oh, you all seen it. You know, but you know I got those moves. You could tell I'm me without learning it. I thought you sent me this. Maybe you didn't.
<laughs> Anybody who plays guitar, that is the funniest shit, man. It sounds like Michael J. Fox. Team Cut Corey Fox, so that is fucking amazing. That is the greatest comment that's going to happen here tonight. Clean Cut Corey Fox, bro. Oh my god. That is fucking unbelievable. Didn't he just shave too recently? I'm sure he knows how to play a rap in the late of that movie. Is that Wolfgang? It's funny for, so you'll remember this, but you guys obviously don't know Sean in real life. Sean, years ago, he used to do this thing. If he was playing bass or guitar, he would sit there and play. And then if you're like, hey, can I see the instrument? And all of a sudden you go, dee -dee -dee -ring, ring. and then just start tapping notes really shittily and be like, I forgot how to play. And he would just pass you the fucking instrument. <laughs> You did it. You did it once at Guitar Center with me. I was joking around, and I was like, "Hey, let me see that real quick." And you started playing really good, and all of a sudden, you just stopped. You're like, "Dick, dick, dick, dick." I, I forgot how to play. You passed it to me. <laughs> what the I went fuck? to Guitar Center last week to get that new bass, and um, so I was like, I, I knew I liked the bass. I wanted to just go make sure, like in person, because I, I usually I was gonna buy it used, and like if you get it from another state, you can't fucking see it first. So this one was like 30 minute drive. I was like, I'll go check it out. So I check it out. And I'm holding, I'm standing there. This dude's like, yo, you need help? He like works there. And I was like, sure. He's like, I'll be right with you in a minute. So he gets out there. This dude is like, he's like, um, oh, what's the guy from Eddie from Stranger Things? He's this cool, long haired dude. He's got sweet, long fucking 80s hair. Like he definitely worked with it that morning. So he's got the long kind of curly fucking hair. It's poofy. Just he's got cool a jean bro. vest on over shit. Yeah, he's in good shape. He was a super handsome dude too. He was like the man. Like in the 80s, this guy would have fucking slayed Poon and probably like died of like fucking gonorrhea. I would have slayed your Poon. But he was super cool. He's like, you like the bass? I was like, yeah, it's great, this and this. I was like, strings kind of suck. He's like, grab a set of strings. I'll toss it in. Just don't say you got it for me. I was like, I got you, bro. Dude was awesome. Out the door and everything quick. I was the man. When I brought... Uh... Sucks, I don't even play it anymore. But when I brought... Because I obviously got a way better fucking guitar, and I got lucky on that one. But when I brought that... um, The Ibanez... I was like, yeah, I don't, uh, same thing. I don't like these strings. I don't like this setup at all. And the guy was like, he, by the way, some nerdy dude, he looked like the dude out of the subdivisions music video. And he was like, uh, give me like 45 minutes. And I was like, fuck you. But I was he like, put all right. New strings on it. He put new, not only did he put new strings on, I told him, I said, I just want it to be an E. I don't play anything else. Like just E. He comes back. Not only are there new strings on it, it's in E. To this day, except for the one string that broke, it's still in E. And um, <clears throat> he cleaned the entire thing. He went through with like a toothpick and redid the, the entire fretboard. There was, well, there was funny because you were telling me like, oh, can you, if you were going to tell me that he threw in new strings, I was just going to tell you. And then you went home and didn't put them on because it's a Floyd Rose and that's a shitty job. But the fact that he put oh, on Floyd Rose strings, that's that's not just putting on strings. That's that, a pain in the that, balls and getting it into That's where the sense. 45 minutes comes from. And the thing that sucks is that guitar I broke... I broke a B string playing a queen solo, and then I broke the. Hey, keep going. This I broke the E string, and I broke something else, and then I tried to sit there and learn how to do the Floyd Rose pickups, like how to fucking tune it. Um, you have to put coins. Oh wait, no, he's back. Yeah, so I had to, I had to try to change those strings, and I was on the phone with you, and I did it myself with the dimes. Yeah, it doesn't, it, dude, it doesn't even matter. Like I changed the strings, it doesn't matter. Like they, it goes out of tune. Everything's tight. Everything with the coins. Like, it's it's got to be done after you do a couple Floyd Rose, you get used to it. But there's the way of of propping the bridge and locking it in place, mm -hmm. and then putting strings on. That's the way to do it. But now this, I got lucky because I got. By the way, for a deal, I have a uh, players or uh, Fender Stratocaster Made in America Player Series Custom. That's, That's Mexican. Like Fourteen hundred dollars made in Mexico, and I got it for four hundred dollars because the guy's kids dropped his bass, and he was afraid that the, the guitar would be destroyed next. So yeah. 
That's a sick deal. Strat's, a, Strat's the way to go. This is I'll the Spectre that I got last week. I'll show it off to everybody. It's really little, nice. Little burl maple, cute little uh, little headstock. Little. The best thing about this is the body, the NS design. It's meant to be ergonomic, so it's got a fucking. What curve. is that? For? Ned Steinberger. You know Steinberger bases. Yeah, it was a joke, but yes, I know. Who yeah, you're uh, he's a furniture maker, and he teamed up with Spectre years ago. But yeah, this base is pretty sweet. Plays a mean Seinfeld. I forgot all how to play that. Kramer, did you have to say the N word at the comedy store? Yeah, we do. Uh, isn't there a isn't there a big you can purchase for the talk? So they do make yes, yeah, Seinfeld. So the Warfist, they do make something you can do for your Floyd or Floyd Rose pickups or Floyd Rose. You're better off using dimes or coins or something like that instead of paying fifteen or twenty bucks. But the strat I have as a it's not a floating bridge. And by the way, it's that uh, HSS or HHS. So it's the it's a very sweet sounding guitar. Um, we play the I got that video for Pablo. For Pablito, mi amigo. Yeah, oh, you're right. I, I didn't see this. I saw this. Like my What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. Oh, he's about to have another drink. Bye bye. I didn't forget about you. I will show you the game I just brought last night. Is this the raping? Uh, no, I watched that last night with Death Wish. I had to skip the first 13 minutes because I couldn't watch that scene. Oh, uh, oh yeah. this new Aussie uh, song that just came out. When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Good, yeah, good disposition. By the way, Ozzy. When someone uh, dies, they tend to rot in the ground and don't when return. Dies, a crow has sex with their corpse. It's just known. Ozzy released a vocal track thing last night called Crack Cocaine. It's some other guy's song, and he's in it. And uh, There's this very terrible guitar website that I used to love, but they were taken over by somebody else, and they suck now called Ultimate Guitar, and they were praising his vocal abilities, and it's like Ugh. he just he sings. Speaking of Ozzy, you know that song Hash Pipe from Weezer? Yeah. that was They wrote that, or Rivers Cuomo wrote that for Ozzy, and he said he passed on it. He's like, Awful it was a player. lot heavier. He's like, it turned in popular. Like, we'll do it. So like they made it popular and stuff like that. But he's like, it was originally a lot heavier. And he's like, this should be an Ozzy song. And he like said to him, and Ozzy's like, nah, I'm, I'm fucking good on that. I want to sit there and do drugs and, and laugh at Sharon. Sharon! He sucks, by the way. By the way, like, before we go on with this, I, I have to say, as somebody who loves Black Sabbath, one of my favorite bands, I love Ozzy's solo career. That guy fucking sucks. He's, he's really not a good singer. He he was a decent singer. He had a cool voice, and he just had the right backing. He didn't really write mm -hmm. his stuff. He had people write him for him, Lemmy and Daisley, and, and, and so he had the he had the greatest riff masters, best and, Seinfeld voice. I'll give, I he also he, he did people. really they're not they're not so people. he he also was a really good inventor of things though. Like so with Sabbath, like that's a whole new sound. Ozzy was well, a completely that wasn't different him. sound. I know me. Yeah, but still, like all those vocals and everything to it, and same thing with Ozzy. Like he recruited this band, and like that's a totally different sound. There's nobody out there really sounds like Ozzy before that. That was a very different sound. Ooh, and after then this, Ozzy I, uh... recreating himself, like Ozzy in '81 versus Ozzy in '91. Like Ozzy in '91 was a totally different sound. And fucking, oh yeah, not... yeah, yeah, I agree. Ozzy, uh, um, Ozzy is a man, but no, his voice. After is... this, I I do want to show you a really cool clip about. Uh... He ain't no fucking Chaline Dion, but you know, <laughs> meh. They were good. But the early 70s had so many good bands. Sabbath was nearly mediocre. No, nah, dude. Sabbath was awesome. And the, their best album is uh, Sabotage. Everybody First puts Sabbath, from Sabbath down. Are, are just bangers. Every song off it. But Chef's but kiss. everybody makes everybody puts Sabotage down as that their weakest album. And it's not. It has Megalomania. No, and it has no, um 
Am I going insane? Which everybody hates because the red it says radio, but it doesn't stand for radio edit. It stood for radio lateral, which was a medical uh, surgery. Yes, the red was another good one. The only shitty the thing off like that my favorite is blow on a jug. <laughs> but yeah, man, symptom of the universe. Jeez, symptom of the universe is one of the great. Actually, you had that live DVD, uh, the Black Sabbath Never Say Die DVD, which, by the way, Dad saw that tour. That's how Dad found Van Halen. I had Paranoid, whatever. He found them in an alley. Paranoid is not a is not a particularly good al- look. If you're going to talk about no, the no, first no, no, five no, albums. No, no. It's Paranoid. good album. No, no, Paranoid, no. the song is played that. out. Don't say that. Paranoid, the song is played out. I, I, War I Pigs is amazing. Yes. Electric Funeral is excellent. Oh, Hand of Van, Doom is excellent. So good that fucking what's their name covered it. Planet Iron Caravan. Man, even though it's it's played out, it's excellent. Planet Caravan is still pretty fucking excellent. Iron Caravan covered that too. Um, Rat Salad. Rat Salad is is excellent. Hand uh, Fairies were Wait, like, dude, dude, that. No, album no, no, no. Wait, hold on. Is Fairy Wars boot? Yeah, that's the last song on that album. Okay. okay. Yep. So, they, like, the, and the it actual, closes with that epic riff. Like that, that is a solid album. If you're a good Black Sabbath album, just listen to the first album, Black Sabbath itself. It's very jazzy. It's loose. It's raw. There's nobody really producing them. It's them just and getting their chance to do whatever. Yeah. Fantastic. A lot of it's just leads and, and jams, but they're great, great blues jams with great mm-hmm. lyrics and stuff. And, my favorite behind the wall sleep. Oh my god, that song and the way it goes in NIB is just one of my favorite songs from Sabbath is Air Dance, and not because of the actual main riff. It's the jazz breakdown at the end. Yep, which they is had a lot of jazz, jazz breakdown. What, was it a National Acrobat that had the national jazz breakdown? Has a good jazz that whole breakdown. jazzy piano part of the end. The way that just ends is different. Uh, a National Acrobat is an excellent fucking song. What was this one that you used to sing to that? Hey, yes. Yes, pain, you sang pain, that. Pain, 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 pain. We sent it on someone's answering machine. I used to, so that was a great thing in the nineties when people had answering machines. We would prank people all the time. And uh, the Keith, Keith Wilkinson, yeah, I, I pranked that answering machine. There was a girl Sarah that I didn't like. I'm not going to say her name, but uh, she was like a goody two shoes, and she she just pissed me off. So uh, S dot and I, my friend S dot, we called and left a message on a machine. It was like the exact word for it was like, "Yo, Sarah, this is Idila." I got your shit. Call me back. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. Um, real quick, CK, let me send you in Twitter on your DMs. Let me send you one Sabbath song that is amazing to turn your life around. It's called Megalomania. I'll send it to you. It's or the red, either or. I'll send you both of them. But just listen to those. It will absolutely change your mind. After that, it gets kind of iffy. Like, if you listen to Born Again with Ian Gillen, it really sucks. I like Tony Martin, which is after that. And then they had the other one with Glenn Hughes, which was, uh, I think, Seventh Star. That one's fucking garbage. The thing I like about the Ritz, Ritz a very long song, but it just keeps changing styles. Like, it starts off that sadistic intro with the woman screaming. And then that's the the end of my green and sick. Yep. Goes into this really heavy riff and song and then slowly transforms into this almost like 60s feel good flower song during that late bridge and then all of a sudden right back into that low tuned fucking riff and C. The best thing about the writ is the guitar part. How old is it? Uh it's 1974, I think, right? 74, 75. You would know. Uh Trippy, I heard Connor likes the D. I only like your D because you're a Trippie's, clown. No, Trippy is super fucking wrong. Connor doesn't <laughs> like the D. Connor loves the D. I love the D, buddy. Love the d connor fucking but, uh, i'll, I'll uh, send you that one and the cool thing yeah. about that is if you're one of those guys because i think uh i'm pretty sure i know how, how old ck is that gu- the guitar part and everything leading into it is very vanilla fudge sounding yeah so it's it's, it's a very like very e, and then fucking just song fucking drops man yeah, it's, and the same thing with megalomania megalomania to me to this day i've seen like slayer live seen metallica i love megadeth and all that shit for some reason, to me, this day, like, or to this day, what I'm starting to say is, uh, Megalomania is the heaviest fucking song I've ever heard in my entire life. For it's me, it's under the sun. 
What? Under, the, under the Sun was the heaviest under one. Under the Sun is another good one. Killing Yourself yeah. to Live is one of my favorite songs. I, I will absolutely send you those two songs. But, I really yeah, I was gonna say, if you want to get them hooked on Sabotage, I'll just go straight for Symptom because it's like put on Symptom in the universe. The second those drums drop, don't tell me your head is not slamming up and down. You're not into it. Those, vocals are great. Then you have those drum fills and the fucking little bridges in between. So, you know what's so funny? And then so that happy. song that sounds had almost like not even salsa, that like Latin guitar feel. And that's mm-hmm. how the song ends. It's, it's, it's wild. I almost want to get Trippy in here just for the Crow trailer because I think <laughs> I think he would enjoy that. But Trippy, you should definitely watch this, this last part. I'm going to restart the Crow trailer just for you. Uh, and then I have that gameplay footage for, uh, for Pablo because he's been a good boy. He has, he has been a good boy. Good Pablo, boy. you are a good boy. <laughs> Elysium's my boy. Quite brilliantly broken. Yeah, but I didn't realize how sick heavy it was when I saw the teaser. But like for the like first like fifteen seconds, it's like mad different scenes and angles of sex. She's like anal. I hate it. sex, man. I really hate. It. I shouldn't have seen any of it. Oh no, Pablo! I got you. Don't worry. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey! Joey! When someone dies, they become gay. When someone makes a movie that's somewhat popular, 20 years, someone will remake that movie, but much worse. And it is not necessary. That the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. That's like Shakespearean until you put the wrong things right. That is, that's deep. First of all, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, me, let me go back two seconds. I just want to say this right here. The power of the only time I ever want to see somebody dipped in a bathtub is during training day. Training day has the death bathtub scene when he's like, yo, you got that. Yo, he's got a picture of your cousin in your wallet. Doesn't He's Serbian like, film have a really good bathtub scene? Or am I oh, that's a different dude, Serbian film? Jesus Christ. <laughs> dude, come on. That's Serbian Jew double up, and I'm not going to fall for it. But you're running out of time to save her. Yes, it's cool. I was single one of them. Killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. CK is saying the crow from 20 years ago. Are you referring to the crow from 30 years ago, CK? We're that old, if that's what you're referring to. It's not anger, it's love. Dude, you not only do you know that love. Not only do uh fucking movie trailers. I mean, not only do do movies suck now, the trailers suck really bad too. Yeah, they're all the same. Like, it, it, it's very. They're all bad, and they have the same cliche. Like they're all the same. It's a formula they follow. Just like a Beyonce song. Love a formula they follow. Yeah, it's it's terrible. I I w- do before we get out of here. I want to play this for Pablo. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that one. I can't remember how long ago. Jesus Christ, dude. Funny uh, thing about Pablo, the girl. I remember I was in sixth grade. There was a girl, Rosalie Cusco. Never heard of her again, but she was super cool chick. She would always have like the dope ass Jordans and shit. But um, she, her parents like recorded the crow for her off of HBO when it aired, and she was cool enough to let me borrow that VHS, and uh, that shit was bomb. Bomb. That's cool. I remember the really not that cool. Actually, VHS. it's kind of corny. You can definitely, no, I know. One of the first VHSs that. I ever saw was the one that um, S. Dot recorded of South Park. The first three episodes. Oh yeah, uh, Chef Abe is one of them. First VHS Chef, I fell in love with Chef Empire Aid Strikes Back. Uh, Chef Aid. I forgot the second one, but then the Rainforest. Last one. Rainforest. Main Forest with Jennifer Tweak. Aniston. 
was it tweak under pencil Yes, yes, it was. Oh, nice. um, first VHS that I was obsessed with was Dad recorded Empire Strikes Back off of HBO in the eighties, and it was the eighties HBO intro. It was super dope. It was super old, but I was so obsessed with that VHS that I brought it to school and showed it for show and tell. And I probably look like the biggest cheese ball dirtbag. I'm like this nigga, fucking. Oh, I You're just like, said, oh, who is this gay ass motherfucker? This guy got fucking VHS over here that are fucking duped off the fucking TV. He can't even afford the real shit. Poor boy. <laughs> Poor old Sean. Let me play this trailer. Let me go pee. Uh, this is for Pablo. Rated right. M for mature. It's eluded all others, but my vision is clear. Why did it say Matthew Perry on the side? Is that 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 character's name, or did Matthew Perry voice his character from the hot tub? The name is Chilbrunet. I just need spirited young folks who I can teach to fight from scratch. As an interpreter, I have many contacts, you see. And though I cannot fight like you, I am confident that I will have a role to play. So, the cool thing about this game is they made uh, Matthew Perry a bad guy. Wait, is that really his name? That's really, that's the Matthew Perry, like, hot tub? Commodore Tom Perry. Do you not know about the story of Commodore Perry? Commodore, there was a dude named Commodore tub. Perry. Yeah, 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 Matthew Perry was a guy who went to Japan in 1856, I think, or 57. He's the one who opened Japan to trading. And uh, they make him a bad guy in this, and he's just a super buff dude on a ship. Oh like, my oh, god, man. Connor, you're so boring with your history. Let's not just fuck with you. So I really didn't know the guy's history. name, though. I really didn't know that. Yeah, Commodore Perry. <laughs> What can the people possibly do? They must stand behind the shogunate, or we all fall to the foreigners. I have some contacts in the shogunate. See, you, you don't see them giving the foreigners guns. I could make the necessary <laughs> arrangements. By our deeds, our name will ring out over Kyoto. I'm expecting you to play your part as well. My only criticism of the game so far is I thought it would be in Japanese. Like, just make it lore accurate. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the creator character presets is Samuel L. Jackson from Star Wars. I'm not even joking. It's literally him. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what's going on with this game. <laughs> it's just a Japanese thing during, like, the 1850s and whatever. But, yeah, that was, that's that. this is for Pablo. <laughs> There are things one cannot accomplish alone, but a strong bond makes both parties involved stronger. Since those ships arrived, Japan's been in turmoil. The thing is, we're not really part of either faction. I know that whichever path we choose, we will do really it for game Japan's game. future. Now is the time to show the world the tenacity of our place. No, I'm the a reckoning is at hand. We did, Pablo, we did just try like to all the help we can yeah. get. I'm going to need you on our side. <laughs> Dope fucking mm-hmm. game. Dope game and uh cute Unreal Engine 5.4 was released recently and it's better than the last one. Dude, Unreal Engine first off five so far has been nothing but dope shit. That's where we got that body cam footage game. Like that shit is awesome. Uh Rise of Ronin. Unreal Rise life Ronin, is dope and it does dope shit, up. bro. My life is dope. I do dope shit. Rise of Ronin is just uh Robert De Niro. And he's like, wow, were you in the cafe? Who, who who had gay sex? I don't know. I wasn't there. That movie was all right. Ronan. That was all right. That that movie that movie Ronan that was all right. But uh, I think we did a good show. Right? I thought I uh, 
I thought the show at the beginning was really good. I think I made everybody really mad with the new laws coming in. <laughs> um, you again, the you made me fend for myself a couple times, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, fuck you, Xfinity. Uh, cool thing is the new studio is completely done, so we can or I can do new shows or more shows during the week, which is what I want to do, but I'm way too fucking lazy to actually do it. No, I, I will do it though. Um, but yeah, I thought we that, that was a pretty good show, and uh, yeah. we're gonna get out of here because I want to play this game that I just played the trailer of, and Sean has a kid and he has to go to sleep, and he has uh, a boyfriend that that uh, I'm jealous of. He's, he's he's cold in bed without my spoons. He's cold in bed without your supple nipples. Mm. But uh, hey, thank you everybody for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday night. Don't forget to fucking like, subscribe, share this out there. All that good stuff. Um, rest of your weekend, mofos. Yeah, I'll be on Discord for a little bit and obviously Twitter and shit. So, I mean, if you want to hit me up, hit me up. But uh, hey, thanks for uh, joining in.